Good morning. Today's scripture re- reading um, comes from two places. It comes from Matthew 7, verses 21 to 23, and John 3, verses 1 to 7, which is on page 1014 and 111 of your Pew Bible. Okay, got to find the right spot here. Okay. I'll just say, people have heard me talk about reading out of my mom's large print Bible, which I'm going to do again today. But one of the things is, it's different. Maybe all Bibles have this. I don't know. Not, well, I should say many. But if, it, if Jesus said it, it's in red. Does anybody have that? A, a Bible like that? Letters, yeah. So it's red letter. And I've never been given as much red as I'm given today. Um, I guess it means it's important. So it's a lot of, a lot of what Jesus has to say here. Matthew 7, verses 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. And then further, John 3, verses 1 to 7, titled, Jesus Teaches at Nicodemus, Teaches Nicodemus. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miracles, signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born again when he is old, Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As Robert comes forward for our skit, this is a skit presented by the evangelism team, but we have two people that are ill today, uh, are not with us today, Maddie and Jeff. So I will be doing Jeff's part, and Fred... Where's Fred? Fred will be doing Maddie's part. I want to, as uh, Robert comes up and takes a seat here and gets his microphone, um, I want to uh, tell you a little bit about it. So you have to imagine that this is a park bench. And uh, Robert is minding his own business, sitting on the park bench, reading a newspaper. And um, Donnie, but I'm going to be Donna, uh, enters and uh, has a conversation with Robert. Or I'm going to call you Robert the whole skit, I can tell. Frank. Um, Okay, I think we're good to go. Better get my glasses on, though. Um, let me just say that although Frank is a salesman, he doesn't seem like a salesman. He doesn't really want to have a conversation with any other buddy. Uh, he's forced to talk to Donna, who sits down, and all the while he's kind of like, oh, do I really have to do this? Because he really isn't the type of salesman that is when you think of a salesman. On the other hand, Donna is a salesperson and uh, will be one of those pushy type of salespeople that you really hate. And uh, Frank does all he can to avoid talking to Donna. So, Hi there! It looks like it's going to be a scorcher today. Big Donna is the name, and sailing is my game. What's your handle, Mac? Frank. Uh, well, hi there, Frank, old man. Glad to meet you. Have you got the kids and missus somewhere here in the park? No, I'm alone. All alone with no one but Donna to keep you company. Well, Franco, buddy, this could be your lucky day. 
<sighs> what game am I in, Frankie? Sales. Sales? You too? That's amazing. You and me are exactly alike. You know, this makes us like family. Thanks. <laughs> Say, tell me about yourself. Oh, Donna wants to know all about his new brother. You know, I've been in this sales game for years myself. I have sold widgets in Chicago, beans in Boston. Why, well, I even went up to Alaska and took a shot at selling polar bears to the Eskimos. That's a good one. <sighs> so, what's your angle? The, the scam, what's your pitch? No pitch. No pitch. Uh, oh, you don't fool me, Frankie boy. I bet you're the best. You know, I was outstanding sales rep in my district last year. Sold more units than anyone else. <laughs> Come on, how about you? I didn't really keep count. They do that at the home office. A salesman that doesn't keep count? That just doesn't happen. Come on, what's your total? 312. 312 in a year? Wow, that's great. Uh, that was 312 in a month. A month? A month? That's incredible. You must be the best salesman ever. It's the product. Pretty much sells itself. Well, now we're getting somewhere. What's the product? What do you sell? Eternal life. Eternal life? You can't sell that. You're right. Actually, we give it away. <laughs> Come on, Frankie, old man. You are kidding me. What? Who do you work for? The oldest company in existence. But who do you work for? Who, who do you answer to directly? Well, that's easy. I work for the old man himself. Really? The top guy? The very top. <laughs> How high is he? He's pretty high up there. About as high as you can get. Well... How often do you meet with him? Uh, we keep in almost constant communication. I've already talked to him three times today. Wow. I wish I had that much interaction with my supervisor. Well, what kind of things do you talk about? Everything. A lot of times we talk about the people that I meet. Pigeons, huh? More like potential sales. Pardon me for asking this, Frankie, old boy, but do you like the sales business? Who, me? No, I hate it. It makes me nervous talking to people. Well, then why do you do it? I have no choice. Why? What are you talking about? Well, see, I used to uh, be an auto mechanic, and I really liked it. I still do mechanics, but since I became a sales rep, I find, find myself doing this pretty much all the time now. So what is it you sell? Forgiveness. <laughs> okay. First you said eternal life, and then you said forgiveness. Yeah, we deal in both. Okay, I'll bite. How much do they cost? They're free. Free? Free? Come on. You don't want to start a riot. Sorry, sorry. Free? Are you out of your mind? You can't sell stuff like that for free. You could destroy the stock market. Well, I can't help it. It's company's policy. I don't make the rules. <sighs> so who's your target audience? I mean, who gets all these free offers? The rich and famous? They're offered to everyone for free. Standard operating procedure. So what's the catch? Pardon? The catch, the angle, the scam. What's up with this? No catch. So. Are you trying to tell me that anyone can have forgiveness and eternal life for free? Yep. Time limit. There's got to be a time limit, right? Am I right? You get them to buy it on the free offer, and then you sell them something else because time has run out. Uh, the offer is as good as long as you live on Earth. Well, what if you die? Then time's up. So, how can we be sure this offer is legitimate? It's a guaranteed offer. So, it's on the free. So, it's free, it's on the level, and it's guaranteed. It's about the size and of it. it's eternal life and forgiveness? Yep, that's both of them. Uh, that's what well, it is. 
Really, who wouldn't want that? Yep. Uh, I mean, that's great. Living forever and forgiveness for free? Yes, it's too good to pass up. Hurry, take advantage of this free offer today. So, so what do I have to do to get this? Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, believe in him, and you shall be saved. Jesus? The old man's one and only son. For real? For real. That's what I have to believe? Believe Jesus is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead after he died for our sins on the cross. That's oh, it. yeah. I, I remember hearing all that in Sunday school a few few decades ago. Is it, is it still true? It's always been true. Well, I think I've heard all those stories. Good. Then all that's left to do for you is to repent your sins and to ask Jesus to enter your life because you trust in him as your savior. Will you pray with me? Of course. It's always a pleasure to talk with the home office. Dear God, I've done a lot of bad things in my life. Well, yeah, let's talk turkey. I've made some sales calls that I shouldn't have made, and I've closed some deals that weren't on the square. I asked, ask, please, Lord, forgive me. Uh, and I thank you for Jesus, who's your son. He came here, and he died on the cross for my sins, and I thank you for accepting his payment on my account. I sure can't pay for it myself. Amen. Amen. Nicely done. Congratulations. You know, I, I feel strangely relieved, like, like something has changed. Something has changed. You've just become born again. Now you have forgiveness and eternal life, just as promised. And guess what? Now you're a real salesman. Congratulations, Donna, my girl. Sir, Don is my name and selling is my game. Uh, do you think I could interest you in eternal life and forgiveness? Let me tell you about our special offer on forgiveness. It's good till the day you die. <laughs> the end. <laughs> All right, give me a moment to change hats. <laughs> Let me ask you a hard question. If our church were suddenly to disappear or close, would the community care? Or would they even notice? Today, I want us to talk about kingdom versus church. The word kingdom appears 152 times in the New Testament. 152. It's 116 times in the Gospels alone. And the word church appears just three times in the Gospels in the book of Matthew. Kingdom church. The very first public words of John the Baptist was to announce the kingdom. The prayer that we recited this morning, the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, admonishes, thy kingdom come. Matthew 6, if you remember that verse, Jesus tells us to seek first the kingdom of God. So where along the way did we lose the kingdom and just become church? E. Stanley Jones, a missionary a statesman, said this, a salesman, a missionary statesman said, the greatest loss that has ever come to the Christmas Christian movement in its long course in history was the loss of the kingdom. 
Kingdom is more than just growing the church. It involves doing kingdom work in our community. I want to give you some examples of some churches. In Omaha, there's a church called Christ Community that partnered together and they packed and shipped 300,000 food packets through a program called Meals for Molly. In Cleveland, the church, one of the churches there painted 30 houses for the elderly and disabled. LifeBridge Christian Church runs a car repair service and gives free repairs to those who can't afford them. There's another church that repairs bicycles. Another church that adopted their middle school that was next door. One church, I love this one, it says one church has a gone for good G-O-O-D, program. Every Sunday they put up, they come early to church, they put up a sign that says, gone for good, and they go out into their neighborhood to rake leaves or to shovel sidewalks or to deliver groceries, and then they come back at 11 and meet for worship. Another church has a program called Stuff the Bus, and they stuff a school bus filled with backpacks for students. Yet another one does debt counseling, and another one does legal counseling. One of the most innovative is a church that each year, and I think this is my favorite. I, I wish I wasn't retiring because I'd like to find a church that would try this. Um, each year, they choose one of their church members, their own members, and they pool their money throughout the year, and they raise money to pay off the debt to help that person get out of debt that one person in their congregation. And the next year they choose another person and the next year another. So far over the years they have raised $2.6 million to help people within their congregation to be debt free. And the interesting thing is that over the years 98% of those people have paid the church back. Some churches serve by opening their facilities. Maybe they don't have manpower or woman power to do all these things, but they open their facilities. The First Baptist Church in Honolulu, uh, one week a month, the entire week of uh, one week a month, they provide housing to homeless families. They have an area in the church, they actually set up Sunday school classes, they bring in cots for that week, uh, they have showers, and they house and feed homeless families during that week. But I want to say that it's not, just en it's not enough just to be community-minded. All of our good deeds in the world aren't enough if we don't accompany our good deeds with good news. That's what the skit was about this morning, sharing good news. We're not called to just be, we had a wonderful program last summer, the community volunteers where we tracked from April to September uh, what we were doing in the community. And that was a wonderful thing, don't hear me wrong. But it's not enough just to be community volunteers. The Bible calls us, God calls us to be community workers community workers. Community workers are always working to introduce people to Jesus. Community workers know that lives can only be changed by Jesus. Only by entering into that relationship with Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. This funny little skit this morning <coughs> was so true. We have to have that relationship. We have to make that move to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord if we want to have eternal life and forgiveness. Jesus himself, if you look at the Gospels, began with service. He fed the 5,000. He healed the blind, the lame, he cast out demons. He, he improved, literally improved people's lives. But he always kept 
their eternal destination in mind. He always, whenever given the chance, preached and taught of the kingdom. Kingdom work does not in, earn us an entrance into God's kingdom. It's only faith in Christ that does that. We have the story of Nicodemus in our scripture this morning. And you remember that Nicodemus was uh, one of the rulers of the uh, religious teacher and ruler. But even he, with all of his learning, didn't understand what Jesus said when Jesus told him he had to be born again. When Jesus talked about the physical birth through water and the spiritual birth through the gift of the Holy Spirit, through faith in Jesus Christ. Someone once said this, It is well and good to be the hands and feet of Jesus, but we also need to be the voice of Jesus by what we say. This church does a lot of mission. We really do, and I commend you on that. Whether it's helping the young mothers, uh, where we did with our Christmas gifts, or uh, this summer where we collected things for the men's shelter, or whether it's through our own American Baptist missions that we uh, give to and support. We do a lot of missions. But how much sharing of our personal faith do we do with our friends and our neighbors? Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Yes, when we help people, they appreciate it. But the best help that we can give them is the message that Jesus Christ loves them and died on the cross for them and has a gift of eternal life and forgiveness. I guess what I want to say is it's never enough just to do good. We have to share the news of Jesus Christ. When we do that, we are doing kingdom work. When we share about Jesus, we will transform lives. When we take the good news out, out into our offices, into our playgrounds, into the park, into the grocery store, to our schools, and even sometimes our homes, it may be needed most. Margaret Mead, who is sometimes a controversial figure, said this. She said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. I would tweak that a little bit and say this. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed Christians can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Would you pray with me? Lord God, we, we pray for our church today. We pray that we might always be about kingdom work. That we might always know that our focus, our nucleus, is to share the good news of Jesus Christ. To tell others of what he has done in our lives. And how we have been changed by the forgiveness that flowed so freely from the cross. How we have been changed by his love. How we have been gifted with grace. Lord, help us to open our mouths to be the voice of Jesus. Amen.